YouTube family, welcome. Today is 13th of August 2022 and I am here to bring a quite a serious message that the Lord has given me over a period of a month. And brothers and sisters, it's been through a number of visions and words and rather than share everything with you, I think I will summarise some of it um, just so that it doesn't become a really long video. The Lord has led me on lots of rabbit trails reminding me of different um, aspects of the reign of the Nazi party in World War II and the ideologies that that particular um, group had and because it seems like the Lord is warning that this type of thinking is coming back and not only that, that it will be worse this time. Brothers and sisters, it's serious indeed because we know that the Nazi regime um, had a, a terrible um, ideology where they wanted to have a perfect race. Hitler wanted to have an Aryan race, a white-skinned race. He didn't want disabled people with people with disabilities, the dark-skinned races. He didn't want the Jewish people or the gypsies. In fact, he went so far as to make sure that they were exterminated. A shocking, shocking regime indeed. And the world as a whole at the end of World War II um, declared that this should never, ever be allowed to happen again. But what I'm hearing from the Lord is that there is worse to come. And I was asking the Lord, was it just going to affect Germany? And um, brothers and sisters, I feel that he is saying it will be in other parts of the world as well. And interestingly enough, I have found um, through looking at news articles that even in Australia, very near to us, they are having quite a problem at the moment in New South Wales and in um, Victoria with um, Nazi ideologies starting up again with the youth. And here is just one article that I've picked out that's very recent, 9th of August 2022. Nazi symbols to be banned in New South Wales. And also in Victoria, I have found other articles. And looking around the world, there are many articles about this problem starting up all over the place. Now, on the first day that the Lord brought the subject up, he showed me folding chairs. They were similar to these ones that you see before you. And what um, I was shown was a Nazi swastika sitting on one of the seats. He then showed me another vision where the seats began to march in that stiff goose step type march of the Nazi army. He showed me groups of young people of young men actually, just in their casual youth type clothing and then he showed me another youth who was definitely the leader. When I prayed about the seats, the Lord said to me the seats represented change. I guess a seat is like a position. You have seats in Parliament and each seat is somebody in a position that represents part of an electorate. And uh, the seat of government is often in the capital city of a country. So a seat is often representing a position of a person. And he said that, this, that the seats represent a change and he told me that they were going to be lifted up and uh, that there was going to be great change in industry and maybe a lot of jobs being lost. That is what I ascertained the meaning was. Um, and perhaps, brothers and sisters, and I'm not saying I understand this fully, perhaps the youth are going to rebel and it's going to produce these ideologies. Um, they may be looking for a purpose. I'm not sure. But... Um, one thing I am sure of is that there is a danger ahead with these ideologies returning. Now the other thing that the Lord um, showed me on that first night was this symbol. The goat's head 
in um, a circle like that. And I knew that he was referring to the goat of Daniel. And you can read about that in Daniel 8, where it speaks of the goat being representing a number of kingdoms that were going to come near the end of time. And at the very end of this time, there was going to be a very um, vicious king who was going to arise. And it is my understanding that that king represents the Antichrist because he is going to defile the very temple of God and he is going to come against the king of kings. So the Lord showed me this uh, goat symbol after speaking about the return of Nazism. So I'm not sure how this is all going to pan out, brothers and sisters, but I feel I must share this with you. The other thing the Lord said to me, interestingly enough, was that Daniel was like the um, the different persecuted groups um, of the Nazis in World War II. And I, I thought, how does that work, Lord? And I started to read Daniel just to see where he was going with this. And I only got within the first few verses and realized, yes, indeed, Daniel was treated the same. So what happened at the beginning was... King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon attacked Jerusalem and then he took prisoners. He exiled people such as Daniel and he ordered his officer, um, Ashpenaz, as you can read this in verse 3, I think I will read it. The king ordered Ashpenaz, his chief official, to select from among the Israelite exiles some young men of the royal family and of the noble families. And here's where it gets interesting, folks. It says they had to be handsome. They had to be intelligent, well-trained, quick to learn, and free from physical defects. Doesn't that sound very much like Hitler's reign, where he wanted that perfect race? And it was only then that they would be qualified to serve in the royal court. The other thing that the Lord showed me on the 16th of July was he showed me a gymnast doing a mat, a mat exercise and I knew it was somewhere like the Olympics and he said they did it in Germany and of course my mind went exactly to 1936 Berlin Olympics which was just before World War II began and I read all about that and found that Germany used the Olympics as a means to spread their propaganda. They actually did exclude athletes that didn't meet their criteria of perfection. And there was almost a boy boycott because uh, the United States of America and um, some countries in Europe did not want to take part in the Olympics because of the regime using their propaganda. Um, to push their ideologies. So um, isn't it interesting that the Lord brought that up as well? And he also told me the word Nuremberg on another night. And Nuremberg was the actual centre for the Nazi regime, where their headquarters was. And at the end of World War II, the United States of America actually um, took over the city and the um, war crimes were dished out to those um, generals in the Nazi party that had done such atrocities. So um, just finishing up, uh, before I look at a few scriptures, on the 8th of the 8th, uh, 1922, um, oh, sorry, 2022, um, the Lord said to me this, he told me there would be a series of these words, um, and then he said, The German wrote rain, this is not the worst. They will know this with civil war. Now, brothers and sisters, I prayed about this and I asked the Lord, um, was it just Germany that would um, perhaps be threatened with civil war? And... Um, I believe his answer was more that it could be other areas of the world as well that are affected because of these strong ideologies that are going to break out in countries. It could cause disruption. I heard words, um, I heard these particular countries mentioned, 
the United States of America and Japan, um, interestingly enough. So I'm not sure how this is all going to pan out, brothers and sisters. I'm just sharing the very small snippets that the Lord has given me. The Lord even went as far as to mention the Cherokee Indians from America. And I read about their lives and the terrible things that they had to endure. Um, they were actually, they were forced into exile, gosh, um, I think it was in the 1800s. Uh, sorry, brothers and sisters, I didn't write it down. And they were removed from their lands and moved to other areas in America to special reservations where they now live. I believe they were from originally southeast USA, but they were um, made to walk um, and travel to new, the new allocated reservations. A very long journey, and I think up to 4,000 of them died on the journey. So they too have been persecuted just as with the Jewish people and the disabled. And the Lord has things to say about this type of treatment. He urges us to look after all peoples. Just an instance in Leviticus 19 verse 14 where he speaks about the deaf and the blind. And he says, do not curse the deaf or put something in front of the blind so as to make them stumble over it. Obey me, I am the Lord your God. So it's just one instance where the Lord says that we mustn't um, treat these people with disdain. It's absolute not in the ways of the Lord. In Isaiah 56, the Lord speaks of the right and correct treatment for foreigner, foreigners. In verse 3, he says, A foreigner who has joined the Lord's people should not say, The Lord will not let me worship with his people. A man who has been castrated should never think that because he, could, because he cannot have children, that he can never be part of God's people. The Lord says to such a man, If you honour me by observing the Sabbath, and if you do what pleases me, and faithfully keep my covenant, then your name will be remembered in my temple and among my people longer than if you had sons and daughters. You will never be forgotten. The Lord says to those foreigners who become part of his people, who love him and serve him, who observe the Sabbath and faithfully keep his covenant, covenant I will bring you to Zion with my sacred, um, to Zion, my sacred hill, and give you joy in my house of prayer, and accept the sacrifices you offer on my altar. Amen. God is an inclusive God. He loves all people, and that is how we have been taught to um, think and behave. Let's just see what Jesus said about um, those who love him. And um, we are looking at John 15, verse 18. If the world hates you, just remember that it has hated me first. If you belong to the world, then the world would love you as its own. But I chose you from this world, and you do not belong to it. That is why the world hates you. Just to end with one really positive note, one thing that God did tell me about Germany is that he has noted that the Bible is being taken out more than it has in the past. With the times that we are in, people are beginning to pull out the word of God and seek truth. Wonderful, wonderful news, isn't it? everyone. So on that note, I will leave you and let's just wait and see how this all pans out. I must say I don't fully understand what the Lord is saying, but I can see evidence now that I've looked into it that indeed these ideologies are returning. We will just have to wait and see just how bad this gets. But we trust in the Lord our God and he will always protect us. Read Psalm 91. God bless you all, everyone. Bye for now.